AAR is not responsible for the views and opinions expressed by its presenters or guests. JAIR presents a wide variety of views and opinions, which is to the benefit and purpose of community radio. The right stuff. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Harry and Rabbi Pesach back for another week of fun, excitement, and hijinks. And yes, I have just assumed your genders. Oh. How are we, Rabbi Pesach? Did you forget that this evening? I didn't, didn't forget it at all. Assumed your genders. Didn't forget it at all. Oh, Harry, maybe we're Mind meeting... you, I could always introduce the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You've just heard the disclaimer, so strap yourselves in. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> I think we might be moving into a new age of enlightenment where you forget to say, I've just talked about your gen. I've just referred assumed, to your genders. Assumed, assumed your genders. genders. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. Who knows? We might go a whole show and I won't use the word schmeckelectomy. <laughs> 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 Good How evening. are we, Rabbi Pesa? Good evening, Harry. Good evening, listeners. It is nice to be in the studio with you again this week. Um, it's been busy. Yeah. Have you been busy? No. I've been so oh, busy. I've been busier this week. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, um, I feel like it's a bit non-stop, actually. Well, that's a good thing. And, uh, and the good thing, from yours and my point of view this week, is that there are other things getting in the way for us apart from work. Yes. So you and I have been engaged in the education system this week. <laughs> and everyone's going, cringe, oh, oh my, my God! God is, <laughs> they've let these two spend time with other people's children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tell us about your experience. So Harry and I and our families, we, uh, we were down at Point Lonsdale back in January, holidaying yep. for a week. And we met up with the chaplain and the headmistress of Geelong Grammar. And he said, he said to me, Pesach, when you get the chance, come down to Geelong Grammar and say hello to us and say hello to the kids. And I got the invitation, a formal invitation from Geelong Grammar. And there I was standing in front of a bunch of year 10s and then a bunch of year 7s. And I got a look around the school as well. And I found, I found some some. Jewish kids that go to Geelong Grammar. There are Jewish kids that go there to Geelong, Geelong Grammar. Gra- yeah, yes. and that some, was, um, some find it quite prestigious. It's uh, it, they, I'm sending my children to Geelong Grammar. Have you have you ever ever been down that way? No. Well, I've been to Geelong. It's um, not to Geelong Grammar. Though. Beautiful area, mm. beautiful school. Oh my gosh! I took some photos that I put on my Facebook page. Just ma- a magnificent grounds. It's um, it's a special school when they have their own part of the bay named after them. The Geelong, I think it's called Geelong Grammar Bay. Uh, it was wonderful talking to the kids, and they were all quite receptive, and and it and it was it felt it felt very normal. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds maybe a silly thing to say, but there was no arrogance, there's no show offiness there. It was all a lovely, lovely, almost like a Hamisher experience. It was great. Excellent. And what about for you? Me? Where I, were you, Harry? <laughs> i got to tell you, when I heard this in the I, car, I was slightly in shock. I was, yeah, I was teaching Jewish kids how to change a tyre. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> were you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my kids went to King David, yeah. which is, I keep saying, it's sort of like a Jewish day school. And, oh, that's not going to get us any complaints. Um, what did you say? I said King David. It's almost like a Jewish day school. Um <laughs> But anyway, well, let's just one of the, it. let's, it's a parody. One of, one of the, the uh, one of the staff members called me up and said, "Oh, look, I'm calling you up for ideas because I want to run like we're running this uh, experience sort of thing, and some kids are doing this, and some kids are doing that, and I want to be able to offer them something with cars. Is there anything you would recommend? Who was this? I mean, not who by name, but who was? Was it a form convener? Was it a head of school? Yeah, or? no, the form like a, the the year level coordinator. Wow. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, if I'm running a one-day course, we'd spend this much time doing this, or on two-day courses, we spend this much time doing that, and blah, blah, blah. What do you mean when you run courses? I said, well, I'm, I'm a fully qualified driver training, and I do, you know, defensive driving and 4 by 4 training and all sorts of in-situ driving and, you know, um, behavioral, <laughs> behavioral stuff or whatever. Oh, that's awesome. Would you mind coming down and actually running that part of the program? Yeah, sure, fine, not a problem. I'd like to think so, that you got paid for it. Well, I w- they, she asked me how much I would charge per hour. I just went, you know what? It's my kid's school. You know, I'm happy to do this one. 
Uh, and I kind writers. of thought after Zach left, you'd just be steering clear of the school system. It's kind oh, of like look, when I'm you left Caulfield Grammar all those years ago. Was it Caulfield Grammar? Yeah. Yeah, all those years yeah, ago. Yeah, Mr. Lenny danced the jig. <laughs> did you ever step foot back inside? Or did your parents ever step foot I have inside n- your alma mater? Yeah, no, I've never been back to Caulfield Grammar. I, uh, apparently, we had our 30-year reunion uh, only a couple of weeks ago that I did, yep. <laughs> didn't attend. Um, I don't see anybody I went to school with. Um, so, yeah, I've got nothing to do with it. And I'm sure yeah. if the principal of King David even knew I was on the grounds, he would have ah. just he, he, he would have just uh, broken out into a cold sweat. Oh, just going, just... oh, my God. <laughs> they I didn't finally, know you were there. I finally got rid of the, all those bloody Grav boys. And, oh, my God, Harry's back. What did I do to deserve this? But seriously, did you enjoy it? Look, I had fun. Apparently, the feedback the the kids gave the teacher, they had fun. What did you do? Um, <laughs> it took us two, seriously. It took two hours yeah. to teach these boys how to change a tire. Oh, you actually were changing a tire. Yeah, I took. So I took one of my. That's cars so in. cool. I took one of my cars in and life lessons whole, with yeah, Harry. Took a whole bunch of different jacks so they could yeah. see all the different bits of equipment and show them how hard it is to actually do on the side of the road. And then we pulled out the yeah. gear to show them how we do it in the workshop to make our lives easier and taught them, you know, how to understand what a tire, you know, when was the tire made? Is the tread any good? What How boys and taught. girls? Well, this was just a group of boys. I don't think any of the girls were interested. I don't think any of the girls ticked the box and say, yes, I want to do that activity. Because right, okay. there were multiple activities going on and All the right. kids just got to choose. Yeah. So, yes. Well, that's wonderful. Yes. And so you're I, going I, back I wasn't again having to any do sort it. of ecumenical... Uh, influence on anyone. So yeah, next week we're going back. I'm going back to do uh, what we call pre-drive checks. Yeah. So you know, checking oil and water, and you know what to look for. You know, like um, if you're doing a long distance road trip. Yeah. You know all the checks and things you you need to have with you to to make sure you're going to be able to travel safely. Oh, that's uh, great. Never, never, never. And then so these kids are 16, 17, something like no, that? No, they're 14, oh. 15. Like they're, they're pre-licensed Well, kids. I suppose they're getting their learners sometime in the next 18 months, two years. Something it's, like it's that. Ca- but happening soon. Yeah. Um, but it's more just about the experience. So I'm really <laughs> hoping that in the next couple of weeks I can get my four-wheel drive back on the road. Yeah. Um, so that the week three, yep. um, we can run through four-wheel drive set up. You know why we do what we do, and uh, well, there get you go. See, the school for... can pay for the car to get back on the road. You can get the kids to help you Mate, put the I'll... engine back together. It's it's, it's almost done. Uh, but we're not allowed like, to talk about your four wheel drive on I'm air. Picking, I'm picking. No, I said we're not allowed to talk about the Silverado <laughs> on air. Um, <laughs> but I should be picking up the the head. Should have been finished today, so I pick that up tomorrow, and hopefully start bolting it all back together in the morning. And uh, just out of curiosity, yeah. why did you put on your Facebook page, Harry's banged up, sh dot 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 er. Why would you? Because it is. It's just that? A, because it amazes me the number of people that are really impressed when they see that. Car. Oh, really? Yeah. It's almost um, like a piece of history. Like, like I do. Like seeing a Tirana drive down the street these yeah. days. It, you look at it. It's. Yeah. But like you don't. Re- yeah, but a Tirana's forty years old now. Almost fifty. Like an LJ Tirana's now near enough to fifty years old. Yeah. Well, didn't Henry right. Ford build your car? <laughs> hardy, 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 hard. Mine, mine's only fifteen years old, but it's moving into that history. Like right? I do, yeah. you know, when I do the the um, defensive courses or any of the the high speed stuff, and I take down this Fakakta Commodore that I really uh, just belt around on a daily basis, yeah. the number of people that are going, man, so how I long can't t- believe you're still rocking a VE Commodore. That how is just long amazing. Till you can get. Is it club plates? It's yeah, called? Uh, 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 25. 25, so another 10 years. Another Are you going to move it to... Ten, no. No. No pro- Well, the, yeah, I, may move, I may start moving cars to Club Reg because there's a push at the moment. Because at the moment for Club Reg, you have to have H plates. Yep. So you, know, you see all those cars with the burgundy plates with the white numbers. Right. They're all club permitted cars. Right. Yeah. There's a push to allow personalised... And it's cheaper. Oh, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. cheaper. So registration per car is like what eight hundred and eighty bucks, or nearly, or it's over nine hundred bucks for the next year, right? For for a normal car. Do you say it's over nine hundred next year? I think it might be over nine hundred next year with indexing. 
Um, H plates, I think the last, because I haven't had a car on H plates for the last couple of years, last time it was costing me 120 bucks per car for a 90 day permit. Oh, that's, oh for a 90 day. So you, you work get, it out. If can you, you get a full year, 365? No, no, no. no. For a club plate? Club, club plate, you, you, um, you can have a maximum of 90 days and you've got to keep a logbook. So if you're driving one of these cars and you're lo- you haven't filled out your logbook, if a copper pulls you up, they can actually fine you there and then on the spot for driving been. an unregistered vehicle because you haven't complied with the, the conditions keeping. of the of the permit. Right. So actually, soon I can move uh, the Daihatsu, our two Daihatsu Syrians onto club plates. There you go. <laughs> but you work it out, how cheap would it be? You could own four cars. Yeah. That the registration would cost you about half yeah. of what registering one car would be and there'd only be five days out of every year that you wouldn't have a car to drive. Gosh. Well, I'm sure there's more than five days a year that when you your don't cars drive. cars are not drivable. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Oh, 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 no. I'm sorry. If, if, you know what? If you've Touched got any, a raw nerve. If, if you've got any motor vehicle tales to tell, give us a call on 9069 2087. I can't be the only year... That does what I do. There's got to be others out there. After you, um, after you move the VE to, uh, to club plates, you can get the car you've always dreamed of, a Tesla. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. No, you're not gonna get a no. renewable car. <coughs> Every car's get, renewable. Get a get a Tesla. Uh, no, Harry. I can't. No, I, um, it's only seventy grand or something. It's not the money. What is it? It's the, I, I. All my cars make vroom vroom noises. For a reason. Maybe we can hook up a little. I like the vroom vroom thing. noises. No. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I like you know when you turn the key, it sounds like the world's about to come. After to we an end. come back from the promo, I've got to talk about what happened with me today. Okay. Enjoy listening to Jay Air. Support us and become a member by visiting our website j aircomau um, So what happened with you? So you recall in what was it August September twenty twenty. I did the trip to uh, all around the world. Yes. Uh, for the uh, so I'm schlepping an, babies, I, yeah, schlepping IVF uh, embryos, eggs, sperm, uh, all around the world to different clinics. And as I'm leaving Australia, uh, uh, this should have been the the red light for me for this trip. As I'm leaving Australia, the border force kind of you know they they use their little finger their finger come over this way, son. And uh, they interviewed me for about half an hour, and I said to them, "How can I, how can I make it so that after everything was clear and everything, how can I make it that you know you guys already know me, we already have a relationship?" And they said, "You you can become an Australian trusted trader." So I thought, "Oh, I'll look it up," and it's part of the Australian Border Force, which is under the Home Affairs Department. Yeah. And uh, today, finally, what is it? Eighteen months later. Yeah. Because they were shut down over COVID. And they couldn't do it over. They've been busy. There's now a backlog. Yeah, there's now a backlog. They were not busy at all during COVID. Um, So now they came to my. They showed up at my door. We organised unannounced or no? It was that we had it planned for the last month, whatever it is. Okay. And I didn't expect it. I opened the door, and there's two Australian Border Force guys in their uniforms. And I thought, you know, maybe a suit or not even necessarily a tie, a shirt, whatever, with a little badge. These guys, you know, you get to the airport yeah. and there are the Border Force people in their blue uniforms. Yeah. That's what I had at my front door. And uh, we went through all the steps and processes of uh, becoming a trusted trader. Okay. So, you, this, so I suppose it's just an administrative thing from this point out, yeah? Uh, it, there is partial um, administrative and partial, like the security that I go through in order to in order to um, perform the job uh, so how do we know that I'm not smuggling drugs inside of the canister for example yep. ha- at what point do um, do I ever leave it anywhere uh, do I ever have it out of my hands do I see them putting the um, the actual IVF uh, material reproductive material inside the canister what does it look like and uh, frankly, it's it, I've got it on me all the time, and it is impossible for them to for it to be tampered with. I mean, apart from the cap being locked, um, the things they put in are virtually 
transparent and they're tiny. They're like straws. They're, that's right. They're like straws. You've seen it and well, you've carried it yourself. Well, that's right because I did a couple of jobs for you. Yeah. Where did you get? You took to Adelaide. I went to Adelaide and I went to um, uh, Gold Coast. Oh, did you go to the Gold Coast too? How yeah. good is that? Yeah, I did the Gold Coast running, what, three days? Wow. That's Melbourne, extraordinary. Melbourne, Gold Coast, Melbourne. That was back in the time when we didn't have anything better to do. We had absolutely <laughs> nothing to nothing do. To do. <laughs> the, be- the best one, you know, and I've told a few people that I, I managed to pick up these jobs during COVID. It was great. It just sort of gave me something to do, even if it was just sitting in a car for hours and hours and hours on end. Yeah. And explaining to people how we effectively had to convince the South Australian border, border police right. that I was going to the Northern Territory. Yet here I was rocking up at the South Australian border at like two o'clock, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning in a car that sounds like the world's about to come to an end. <laughs> like, I, I must be thankful cost- that your car's actually got the distance. Baruch Hashem. You know what? What? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You know, my, God my, was on your side for that one. You know what? My cars, once I do spend the time with them, no, they know. do run. I'm just joking. They do run reliably. So um, that but was yeah, a, the one to Adelaide, that was, that was really interesting because I've why? rocked up at the border and there was a cast of thousands in terms of coppers. Oh. There I were thought you meant people waiting to go no, through. No, there the was border. no one. There was no one there. Yeah. Coppers all over the joint, motorbikes, cars, four wheel drives, a whole bonfire, like massive. They're, you know, I felt as though I'd interrupted the party, basically. Right. Um, so they were protecting their border, and but they had nothing to do, basically. They had nothing to yeah. do. This is the big problem. This is the biggest problem over the last eighteen months. I could have done jobs, but there are so many of these officials with so much time on their hands that they will. There's, there's no, there was no one in the airports. So no. they'll pick you out and say, come on, let's have a chat because I've got nothing better to do. Also because there's a lot of other people they want to have a chat with. Yeah. But they can't be seen to be profiling. <laughs> okay, so they like, have to interview everyone. I know. Yeah. Like, especially if I'm travelling domestically. Yeah. Not that I ever travel internationally. But on the odd occasion, I do have to jump on an aeroplane. Mm. Um I will get pulled over for the random bomb checking and screening. Wow. Right? Yeah. Because they've got to stop the big white guy in a cowboy hat yep. just so the brown people don't get suspicious. Hmm. If, We're that one struck a, if that one struck a nerve with you, give us a call on 9069-2087. We're in trouble with that. Oh, one, we're in a huge amount of trouble. You can also but leave, if you want to comment on the, the live stream that, that we're doing, um, feel free to leave a comment there. I do glance over to the left every now and again to see if anybody's yeah, leave left a comment anything on our for us. But as per usual, you know Rabbi Pesach, it's really the same as if you and I were just sitting at the kitchen table somewhere having a chat. You'd have to be... Um in order, if you want to get mixed up in this conversation, you'd have to be um, very uh, strong and confident in your own personal sort of uh, level. As in, as in, uh, where pe- you actually pe- stand on a people, topic. Yeah, people are going to look at this and they're going to say, "What are you talking about, Grandpa?" Or I absolutely agree with you. In Israel, there is uh, there is profiling. And they pick out the, let's just say, I don't know, they pick out the people who don't look uh, like... like, supposed to <laughs> like the, the people who look most likely to blow up a bus. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. what they do. That's it. That's what they do. Let's just, let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah. And, and they're lambasted for it. But, yep. you know, in, in many cases... Um, it works for them. It works. And, and the uh, security forces around the world look on with interest as well, yep. even though they won't tell you. Yeah, yep. Harry... Yes, sir. Standing in queue for a watch? Standing What's in queue that for, all about? Okay, so I got home last week and I was all excited. He was going to buy a particular watch. Someone... Abe wanted to buy a watch. Abe wanted to buy a watch because this was a watch he'd heard about through other people and they were going to go and buy one of these watches and then as soon as they bought the watches, Everyone there'd be no more watches. So then the price of these watches would go through the roof. Ah. 
but he stood in a queue for God knows how many hours mm. to end up not buying a watch, not even buying the two watches that he thought he was going to buy. Where was this? Oh, I don't know. He's somewhere at a shop. Okay. Right. By the time he got there, sorry, we're, we're out of watches. And it just got me thinking. I had the conversation with him about how much crap we, we seem oh my gosh, yes. to... to Bring it to our lives that we believe is really important. You know, mm. like there are people in this world who would stand in a queue for days and days on end because there was the promise of food at the other end of it. And here you are first worried world, about first world problems. A watch. You right. know, it's a real it's a real first you know, because he came home, oh, did he get it? He was so disappointed. It's like, you know what? Big deal. Was it a particular well a well known brand? It was yeah, you know what, I whatever. Because I'm such or i'm so not a slave to fashion he mentioned it to me he showed me a photo he says hey do you want one i looked at it and went well i needed it and actually i do need to get my watch fixed anyway um but you know i need another watch like a hole in the head i'm right. really not interested in the hype around these what's things. special about it Ech weiss, i don't know even if it's broken it'll tell them the right time twice a day you know what do I know? <laughs> what do I know from there's watches? There's no story to this. I mean, there's, there's no, no, the story is I don't understand people standing in queues right. for all for all these things. Like I don't understand yuppies standing in line for a coffee. Yep. Right. Like I leave uh, I leave home fairly, fairly early and I drive down Glen Huntley Road and there's a cafe on the corner there. There is always a queue outside this one particular cafe. Always. But there's a whole bunch of cafes yep. that are open at that time of day. Yeah. England Huntley Road, right? Why would you belittle yourself to the point where you're prepared to stand in a queue for a coffee? Are like, you sure? Seriously. Are you sure like That's there like isn't people, an element of, of you in all of I, this? I don't understand people standing in line for a boost juice. Like, why am I going to stand in line? I've forgotten about boost juice. I, I hardly get out of these Go days. and buy, <laughs> you know, get your own bloody Vitamizer and do it yourself at home. Yeah. You we know, were talking I, about at the dinner table tonight. You can go and buy two avocados instead of going to buy the avocado dip from the supermarket. Same, same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just got to put a little elbow grease into it. Yeah. Um, but are you sure we're not talking about you, Harry? As in, you collect things too. You let things... Hoard up, don't what do you? I hoard up. Well, you've got a whole factory full of material that's just sitting there, don't you? Or not? Is that untrue? Well, it's it's largely untrue. Most of it is projects now. And I'm the first one to admit yeah. that if push came to shove, something happened and I needed to cash up really quick. Yeah, I've got stuff there that I can cash up really quick. Okay, so it's it is fairly liquid. Right? So it's fairly liquid. It's sort of, kind of, not really a, a bit of an investment strategy that allows me to enjoy it whilst I own it mm. and have some fun with it as opposed to everything else, which is really grown up. Because um, you could buy some nice watches for if you swapped all of that over. I could buy some nice. I could buy some nice watches. Save yourself but, you on know, the rent. I'm not. I'm not going to get. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get any knuckles out of out of owning a watch. And I never. And I've never stood in line to purchase any of any of my toys. Yeah. You know, like I had one guy make me wait an hour and a half before um, I allowed him to make me wait an hour and a half before I just picked myself up, drove to the next dealership and dropped way too much money on a motorcycle. So I I don't wait. For the same motorcycle? For exactly the same motorcycle. Right. Right? So I'm not I'm not waiting. So I'm you not, did a carry pack a moment. Yeah. It's either available now or it's not. Um, when was it? Was it last year or the year before? <coughs> yeah. I can't remember with all these lockdowns. Uh, when Zach got his license. Like he had his license for three days and then he blew up the ute that we'd had for 20 odd years. Like three days in a row, something went wrong with this. <laughs> something went wrong with this ute. The kid hadn't had his license for a, for for a week. And I said to Tab, "You know what? I'm just over fixing this damn thing. I'm going to go and replace it." Every dealership I went to, oh, we can't supply you anything for at least six months or eight months, whatever it was. In the end, I kept the money money in my pocket and just fixed the damn thing. I, I just have no patience, no patience for consumer. Right. So this is moving into a new area that we're going to discuss after this break. 
Find us on Facebook. Just head to www.facebook.com forward slash J Air Radio. That's two R's. J Air Radio. Where are we off to next, Rabbi? Uh, let's go right to the big topic of the week. It's the budget. All... No, not the budget. The what's South that, Australian what's election. The, what's, no, well, the South Australian election. We'll get to that. But the big one is the slap. And it all fun, it all, all of these topics that we're about to talk about all come under an umbrella of moral decay. Okay. okay. So the big one we're going to start with is the slap. Did Will Smith snap? Did he snap? He was laughing at the beginning when he heard the joke, and I think he looked at his wife, and he think, and I, th- I think he thought, "Oh my gosh, my wife's not laughing." And I remember the last maybe six months of all the tourists we've gone through. I uh, yeah, I that that's how I read it. That, is you that know, how you read it? Chris Rock cracked the joke. Just by the way, there, there was no setup, right? I don't think it was. I a don't setup. think it was a setup. I don't think it was a setup. So Chris but Rock. Chris Rock cracks a joke that. Will Smith has probably made around the house at some point. No. Right? I'm just saying, I'm you know, fortunately as a family Maybe we to make had, a bit of light of that situation. Exactly, you know, yeah. fortunately as a family, we haven't had to deal with any, you know, disease, illness, conditions, Baruch whatever. Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Tuh, tuh, tuh. But I'm assuming if poi, we poi, did, poi. you would find ways of making light of it, right? And what you say behind the confines, within the confines of right. your own home, yep. is totally different to what is expected yeah. when when you're out in it's, public. It's like we had that comedian last week at the Purim thing. He was cracking jokes about his uh, him having cancer. Yeah, he's allowed to poke fun at himself. Jews are allowed to make jokes about themselves as well, right? That's right. But it's one thing to be self-deprecating. Yeah. Um, so. You know, Chris Rock cracks, cracks this joke. Will Smith has a bit of a giggle, and then he looks across, sees his wife dying on the inside, and then, yeah, you know what? This is wrong. Yeah. Right? But he must have snapped. Oh. Or did he Or did he get on his... Um, was it his high horse he got on? Or, was, or did he... He just kind of... The bristles on his neck went up and said, wrong. Just wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm prepared... To put it down to that, um, I've never been in a situation where the person causing the hate has been close enough for me to actually give Pop him a one. smack across, give him a smack across the mouth. There wouldn't be much left of him um, if you gave anyone a smack across the mouth. Well, no, that that's true. But you know, I can also tell you when people have tried to have a go at whether it was my wife, whether it was one of my kids, whether it was anyone yeah. who didn't deserve it, mm. um, as soon as they found out that I was able to get to them if I <laughs> so chose to, um, then, yeah, it would be Right, so they back. think twice before they actually open their mouth. Is that's that right. true? Correct. So there's a, they, an they underlying threat from you uh, that's unspoken but there is an it's atmosphere. Unspoken, it's, it's implied. It's they in, know that there's a line. That there's a line, and, and there's a standard. And, I think and, and for him, it was be, for Chris Rock. It was a very much of a throwaway line. It took like two seconds for him to say. It wasn't even as if it was long and extended. It's like no. G.I. Jane. You know, well done. We're going to see you in the next sequel. Where did that come from? Made him sick. Yeah, yeah, and and it was interesting. I was only talking about it with Abe uh, last night. How. We're on opposite sides of the fence on this one. Um, he, oh, yeah? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks Will Smith was completely in the wrong. I think Will Smith, I'm not saying did the right thing, but I'm not saying Will Smith was wrong either. Um, Abe's take on it, and Abe, as you know, is a 20-year-old kid. Mm. Um, he thinks Will Smith did the wrong thing because... He, I believe, is making a value judgment on the status of their relationship. And if you'd like Thank to buy you. into this at all, 9069-2087. Yeah, give us a call, 9069-2087. Because apparently pub, they have a publicly open relationship. Were you aware of this? Who's this? The, the Smiths. Okay. I Will and that. Jada Pinkett. All right. Right. Apparently they have a, an open relationship. So he's made his decision based on the fact 
that they have what they call an open relationship. I don't understand how it works. I couldn't imagine anything more, <laughs> more ridiculous to try. You know, if you've got a problem with your wife, you don't go out and get another woman because then you just end up with two problems, <laughs> yeah. right? I don't get it, but that's what it is. So that's and it's how... probably the other way around for women as well. Why would they want two men? Yeah, well, you, with... well, well, you know what the penalty for bigamy is, don't you? Another two mothers-in-law um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and if you love your mother-in-law call someone who cares um so yeah he's made the call based on that that she doesn't deserve the the defending um my only question to that was if would you think she deserved defending if she'd lost her hair like if we knew that she was undergoing chemotherapy, for example. Right, what do you have cracked a joke about? Right, what do you have cracked a joke about it? Yeah. Right. And an illness is an illness. And like I saw... She's still... She'd been on a video that she'd produced and published to the public and uh, it was... And she was under stress and may very well uh, be showing signs of depression. Yep. Uh, And I saw a brief news bulletin today where they found... They found... a, ...a clip of Will Smith... Making fun of somebody else suffering with alopecia. This was the big headline. Oh, is that right? So it was when he was doing the show with Arsenio Hall. Oh. There was some bald guy. I can't remember. But let's be honest. There's a hell of a difference yeah. in making fun of a guy a fiction, who's going bald. Fictional. No, 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 no. This was they were like interviewing someone. And I think it was a member of the crew or whatever. Therefore, I said, I wasn't paying that much. But you're making fun of a bloke, Right who really, by the time you're our age, you're going to oh. experience baldness. We all get used to <laughs> and it. And a lot of guys shave right? their heads anyway. And, and a lot of guys shave their heads anyway. But for men, it's acceptable to be bald. Yeah. You know, for, for women, it, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, I, can, I just wanted to say that, um, that I can imagine perhaps being in his position and getting really upset with what Chris Rock has just said. And you feel like you want to pop them one. You feel like you want to get up. And and I think I've, I've been in situations before where in public I've gotten up in front of people and, and made a statement. I remember doing one when I was back in school even. I remember telling everyone to shut the hell up because I wanted to hear what the teacher had to say. So, um, Were you feeling all right that day? Well, but it gets to... Did the teacher then send you to Matron? Harry, you and I have both been in situations where um, right is right. And, yep. and you and I are prepared to stand up and make that statement. Yep. Um, so would I have felt like popping in one? Yes. Would I have done it? I mean, that's a, there's a I don't, big step there. I don't think I would have. I Honestly, I could see myself standing up and going, mate, yeah. what the hell... You know, what yeah. the hell's going on? I mean, on? I would who, have been him and walked right the, up to him, right up the on hell, the stage in front of him. Who the hell do you think you are? Yeah. And then, you know what, dear? We don't need to be here. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Or even put your hand on right. his shoulder, yeah. in a, even in a Let's threatening go. sort of way. So, you know, I couldn't do you need see... To step out? Do we need to step yeah. outside and sort this yeah. out? I mean, there Because were... no one's making fun of my wife like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's really only ever been one time where I've had a physical altercation and that was where i literally dragged a guy up a couple of steps just so i could throw him down <laughs> the couple of steps that were at the front of this building but what happened what was the situation oh um he was he was he he, he was a bully um as strange as it may seem i haven't always been <laughs> In two meters tall and a couple of axe handles across the shoulder. Do you regret and it these days? As a in, young in kid, hindsight, that I did. No, no, not Why at all. Not? Because I found out years later, I have been living in his head rent free since that very evening. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing right. because I've, like, I've found out also I've been living inside like, someone else's. Like head. these things, these things have come around. So um, this guy bullied me. I've, and he was a few years older than me. Anyway, I yeah. finished school, as you know. I went off and, you know, I was doing right. stand-up around Melbourne. Yeah. Anyway, one night I've, I've come off from doing a 20-minute 20 set, 20 minute set yeah. stinking hot summer's night. I'm standing out the front of the pub having a drink yeah. and a chat with a couple of the other comics. This idiot, idiot walks up. Hey, do you remember me? I go, do I remember you? And I've, re- I've just grabbed the front of his shirt, dragged, as I say, dragged him up those two stairs to throw him down the two stairs. Oh, he hadn't done anything at the time, actually. 
No, it this was, was unprovoked. You, this you was attacked from, him. He's walked up to me. Right, he didn't do after giving me nothing but, but after giving me but nothing but grief serious, when we were yeah. at school, right? Yeah. yeah. So his this idiot's walked up to me. I threw it down. I said, "You know what? If I ever see you again, yeah. If I ever see you again, yeah. Right? You you're not going to survive. So let's move this on. Let Let's hit the promo button for a second. Anyway, long story short, turns out he became a teacher who was teaching one of my cousins. She's over for dinner one night, like she's in grade four or five she's going oh teacher paul doesn't like me he always gives me a hard time mm. i said you know what you go tell teacher paul who's your who your if he has a problem with you he has a problem with your cousin harry grav yeah. the next time i see the kid it's like oh how you doing oh yeah school's a lot Trendy, better and teacher nice. paul is so nice to me now wow on the right so let's speak that really speaks volumes. That, um, and it's all to do with this idea of moral decay. And there was a, I posted a video on my Facebook page yesterday, and it's about a guy who was uh, who um, punches the lights out of someone who was rude to his daughter and whatever. And uh, he has to go. The court tells me he has to go to a to a what's it called like a rage therapist. Anger or, management. Anger management. And and the guys and he says, you know, there's lots of a holes around. And they need to be taught a lesson. And really, why do you think they need to be taught a lesson? I'm paraphrasing. And he says, well, you know, no one ever taught them respect. And I think that's that it. that's a big thing. Who is teaching the people of today respect? The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. Yeah. Um, so this PC culture has led to a uh, an atmosphere of complete... It's like apathy in the face of people being extremely rude and disrespectful. And we all talk about never again, you know. Has, has anyone done, it, done anything for about Russia and Ukraine? And we all scream, never again, because we all should talk it out. Mate. Yeah. Yeah. And then people say about Israel and, the, and uh, all the Arab neighbours, you actually, and like Trump was right about this, you have to show force. You cannot lay back and say, listen, we'll talk about it, right? Jordan Peterson, I think, said something about, about Russia. These people, no, it was um, Joe Rogan, I think. Joe Rogan. He, he said that, uh, that people forget that Russia is Russia. If you let them do this and you want to just talk it out with them, it's not going to work. Because they're not interested. So you have to show force sometimes. That's right. And these are the kinds of people you have to deal with. But it's also right. these apathetic... PC principled uh, people who have this mindset that you cannot do anything anymore. But look, for the most, I and think it's leading to Western society decay. Well, that that it's a it's a major contributor, right? and I think the issue or one of the issues is most people will do whatever they can do to avoid conflict, mm. whether it be verbal, physical, whatever to avoid conflict because they are not that confident in their own convictions. Mm. They're not that confident in their own character. Right? Okay. So when you have big issues come up, they're looking for the the solution that doesn't require conflict, that doesn't require upsetting Someone, oh, and in fact, I was right. I was only talking about like this. a path of least resistance. Yeah, and I was talking about this with one of my fellow uh, candidates when I was running for the local council, which many people I'm sure are thrilled I uh, didn't didn't make on to. Um, but she was telling me that she was reading this this book about kids playing in the sand pit and how they all managed to get along or why can't we do this as adults? And it's like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. The only reason our kids can play peacefully in the sand pit is because it's the adults who are making sure and fighting uh, and, and taking care of what's important so that, they don't, so that they don't have to yeah. worry about anything. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure in the third world, there aren't too many kids playing in sand pits. Yeah. You know, if they're, you they're let bullies a, have their existence. way, they will prevail. You know, and, and they will. And people will do 
whatever they think they can get away with. Yeah, you know, and, and that was another lesson I learned uh, during that election campaign. Um, and people think, or if people think they can get to you through a third party, they'll give that person a hard time because that's easier than actually having a crack at someone who is confident in their convictions and is confident in their character. Right. I mean, I had to go into These bat. These are typical political games. Typical political games, but I had to go into and, bat. And leading to what happened last week with the woman that died. Because she was involved yep. in the, a, a victim of these political games and it overstressed her to the point of death. Yep. Yeah, yep. Um, we've got to be careful how we couch those terms at at this stage. Well, that's, that's, that's the story that's going around. The, that's All right. the major that news the, media is talking about that it. Is, that is the story. Yeah. You know, and people will generally try and get away with whatever they can. So when you've lost the... Moral fibre, no? Well, when you've lost the belief... Yes. You know, when, when, when our f belief systems and our systems of faith have been done away with, it's then very difficult to maintain a moral compass because morality yeah. can't just cut morality doesn't come from humans that's a good one Go, where are you right. going with this right without a higher power without some universal creator regardless of what we call it or what anybody else calls it, morality is simply a matter of opinion. Morality simply becomes a matter of personal opinion. Right? Yep. A big question I, I'm going, I want to lead to after what you're saying Go for is, it. is uh, are we, this directly relates to what you're saying, are we in a state today of new enlightenment? And I'm quoting this from... Uh, some people staying with us at the moment. Hello, Hannah, if you're listening. Hannah asked, are we in a state of enlightenment today? I don't think we're... I, in terms of achieving enlightenment, I think the West is regressing because we are bow da bowing down, we're kowtowing to those who effectively want to smash down everything that has made the West so great. Yeah. You know, when when we have such a huge movement in support of um, tyrannical political systems, whether it be socialism, whether it be communism, whether it be fascism, um, when you have so many people, so much support for ignoring the basic tenets of human biology, to, to the point where you've got to do so much cerebral gymnastics for it to make sense. I know, it's a hard We're question. What, what is a woman? Well, it was very... It's a hard question. It was very difficult for a very well-educated person of um, colour who happens to menstruate and possess mammary glands to define and have a what a XX chromosome was and yeah have an excess chromosome and got her because you know she's not a qualified biologist um so we've got all these things i would have actually answered i'm not a qualified psychologist <laughs> right because a lot of it is in the field of psychology well it, it, it it's all in the field of psychology because you have to ignore all the biological right. markers yep. uh, for that question to be answered in that fashion. Um, but, yeah, getting back to the whole morality enlightenment thing, when we've got so much support for smashing down what has made us great... By the way, I'm going to get lambasted for saying it's a matter of psychology. It's 
why are you going to get lambasted? If you'd like to lambast Rabbi Pesach, 9069-2087. Yeah, don't, don't wait for sending a, a letter to management about that. Just yeah. bloody ring us up well, and say what, give you, us, say what you feel. Give us a call. Put your name to it. If you've got it. an issue with it, say it. That's exactly it. Don't don't be an anonymous Nelly. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're victimised, you know. Because yes. we, we go straight to the idea that anything that we say might be held against us. I don't think we have a victim mentality. I think we're just realists and we're... You see, and this is what I'm getting back to, go that on. whole point about someone being confident in their convictions and confident in their character. Yep. I'm more than happy for someone to call up and say, Harry's wrong. Okay, fine. You show me where Harry is wrong. Yeah. If it's simply a difference of opinion, it's simply a difference of opinion. Yeah, you can disagree. And I can respect that. Yeah. As I say, my, my son and I on this, this Will Smith thing, you know, and it's a, been a big topic for the last few days, we are on opposite sides of the fence. On this, mm. on this one. We're on the opposite sides of the fence on a, on a lot of things, but we still sit down and have dinner together virtually every night of the week. We still do things to, you know, we, we can still respect each other along with disagree with each other. Yeah. Right? So, you know, that that's, uh, I think, a skill that is... So just a, qu- a quick synopsis. Are we in a state of enlightenment? No. I would say, uh, I'd have to say that if we're not standing up for, for our convictions with with actual, in a physical way, then the answer would have to be no. Definitely no. In fact, I don't know which level of hell we're currently in. Yeah. We, uh, we, we're preaching good things we're, and we're, we're preaching tolerance and acceptance. But if you are, but what if you're seeing, letting evil pervade the world... But what, what we're seeing is people only being tolerant of those who hold right. the same people. Yep, very good. Or, or people who, I mean, tolerant of people who and hold the same that, views the and opinions. Yep. And that's as long as you agree with me, I'm tolerant. The real problem. That's wrong. Yep. You know? And how many times have you and I, even even on the radio, or to- the topic has been broached, and you and I will sit here and disagree with, with each other? Yeah. You know, we still get in the same car, we, do, we go home, we still see each other on show. Okay, so you, you hold a different opinion. Right, Did but you it's like not what as I said to you the other day. You were the best man at my twenty-five year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it's not as though we're going to disagree that two plus two equals four. Mm. Right, we're going to disagree on stuff like you like red, I prefer blue. You mm. know, it's it. You know, you, you've got to learn to separate facts from opinion. We're always looking for people with an interest in radio either presenting your own show or being on the technical side. Become a volunteer now. Head to our website at j-air.com.au. Follow the Get Involved link and click on Become a Volunteer Now. Because we always always get to towards the end of the program, (laughs) we have only covered 50% of what we've done in the last... And we've got 10 minutes to go. I keep telling you, I don't know why you put such a long list on. All right, so we're going to call this time now the machine gun topics right all right don't you know who ernie carroll is i don't ernie Car- remind me who do you r- recognize the name is that eddie the eagle no <laughs> you're on the right track no, you ernie are carroll. definitely on the right yeah. track uh ozzy ostrich died today oh how do you like that ozzy uh, i actually thought he was dead already <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even, yeah I so he was died. the one that had his hand up the the yeah, up an ostrich's bum <laughs> So, um, uh, what do we say? Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Ernie, thank you, Ernie for and all the Aussie great and years in our childhood and all the great jokes. He used to crack some great jokes. He's, you know what? Aussie was good. Yeah, nowhere near as good as Agro. Oh my God, Agro. I loved oh, Agro. I, as I a still kid. love every now and again. <laughs> I've got to turn on the Agro. <laughs> you, you look at the the blooper Shorts. reels for. Oh. <laughs> On not, a, not even the bo- blooper reels, things he said live to air. Oh, it's yeah. Shocking. <laughs> oh, good grief. Yes. God Ag- bless Agro. Yep. But I don't think Agro, Agro could do TV today. No. Not PC. <laughs> not PC. Agro, Agro, Agro oh, she like- used to hit him. 
Oh, hold on, a, hold on, a, hold on. So we've got we've got people. Go uh, what have, what have whenever people I scroll saying? down my phone after listening to your show lately, I get these lovely Indian ladies selling jewelry, makeup, and saris. <laughs> I can't work out the connection. Who's who's that from? <laughs> who's that from? <laughs> from Sandra Cohen. Uh, that kind of. <laughs> God bless you, Sandra. <laughs> Uh, what's another one? Uh, Sandra, uh, that kind of indirect bullying is old, happens in schools as well as politics. Uh, yeah, well, it was interesting you, you say that, Sandra, because here I was campaigning uh, for uh, a seat in local council and my son's girlfriend at the time um, was being bullied at school because the boys thought that giving her a hard time was going to get to me. Which no. Was gonna, yeah. So uh, I had to make I, I had to make a couple of phone calls and get things sorted Good out. Um, As is your right. Before actually walk, because this all happened on a weekend, before uh, actually walking into the school and kicking the principal's door in. Very so, uh, again, I was safe from having to do anything Any other uh, physical. Uh, that's it at this stage. Yes, you're welcome to leave comments. But I like that one, call. Sandra. Um Maybe uh, send us some. Fun. Have you bought it? I'd like to know. Have you bought any of the jewellery or, or the saris? <laughs> and if so, Harry, send us some photos. Can you please explain to me? Uh, this is last week's topic. Okay, lefty, How Lucy, righty, it? tidy. That's about all I know. You've, you've talked about uh, about uh, politics and elections. How is it possible to have lost the South Australian election so badly from a position of being in government to now? 25 seats to 9 seats. What on earth? The same thing happened in Queensland. That one of the... Was it the last state election or the election before that? And uh, now, hear me out on this just briefly. If you're a Liberal government Mm. that's implementing uh, these harsh restrictions, you are lambasted at the next election at the polls. Yeah. If you are a Labor government with such restrictive uh, policies as well, all of a sudden you win votes. I think... What the hell is going on with this world? Okay. Uh, And I I was only hearing... I can't remember who it was. Um, We're going to get off soon, Dwayne. Don't worry. I I can't remember who who was talking, but... um, Yeah. Oh, that's been... I can hear myself Australia. Oh, fuck. it's not taking you this long to put your headphones on. I was on the wrong place. So, in Australia, Labor sort of lives in the natural political space where most people want to be. The Liberals... Like a socialist sort of democracy. Semi-socialist. You know, if things really yep. do go bad for you, the government will be there to help you and, you know, maintain your, your you know, utopian dream. Um, the Liberals ha- have quite often required people to think a bit more about their own situations and take responsibility for themselves. And then on top of that, again, all of Australian politics has just been pulled right over to the left be- because of the Greens. Um, so the Liberals are no longer what the Liberals were. Right. The well, Greens... better now. The Greens are too dangerous, yeah, and so therefore Labor wins. So this is also to do with the. Um, there's something in the, on the ABC uh, news website today, which was, uh, uh, of, they're always having a go at the Liberal Party, always having a go at Josh, and there's what the this headline said. There's 1.3 billion dollars for women's safety in the budget, and it's not enough, because we're not spending as much as we do spend on trains. What is wrong with people? Uh, $1.3 billion on women's safety isn't enough. I mean, firstly, do we even need whatever that means, well, women's well, safety, say, number what, one? What, what does this what How does can this you even what are we, say that's what not are enough? We, what are we aiming to achieve when we go and spend $1.3 billion on women's safety? Yeah. Um, you know... And again, we have to accept some basic uh, facts in life. One, in general, women are smaller and physically weaker than men. Yeah. Two, we now have a legal system 
that puts dangerous men with psychological issues back out onto the streets when they should be locked up. And that has been proven at least twice in Victoria, right? Jill Ma and Eurydice Dixon. Three, over the last 40 to 50 years, we have been belting young men about the head, right? That about. it's not their job yep. to protect women. It's not your job, you know, you've got a... a, a, a Fred, whatever. Right, women, you make sure she gets home safely. You yeah. don't just let her go There's in a no cab respect. on a road. You don't, just no... let her, you don't just let her walk home because that's sexist because you're not treating her with the respect that she could look after herself. But you know what? When you're five foot four and 50 kilograms ring and wet and a bloke my size decides he's going to have a go at you, you do not stand a chance. And the $1.3 billion needs to be put into prisons, needs to be put into psychological facilities yeah. and whatever else to keep well said, dangerous men Good off the you. street and out of these Good women's homes. Not that. about running bloody education campaigns yeah. because you know what? All right, you, you've got daughters, but if you had sons like I've got sons, you would bring them up to be gentlemen. You would bring them up to, to be protect, protectors, and not just of women, of but of girls. any anyone I mean, many, who anyone who is uh, unable to. How many times have my one of, at least one of my boys walked your girls home? Right, right. I could. Yeah. I was told a friend of ours, um, their daughter was at a party. Um, Abe was there. She'd got herself a little bit uh, tipsy, right? And the first thing he did right. was say, "You we'll know look what." After her. Yeah. Okay. Put you in the car. Last topic home. for the night before we hand over to Dwayne and it's all Radio eighty four. And uh, so the question is: in the next upcoming U.S. elections, Trump DeSantis. There's no. It's not Trump. What's his name? White? No. What was his name? I can't remember. Pence. It's no, not, no Trump. Pence. So you should it be Trump DeSantis? You know who I'd love. Who to would you see? love to see? Hopefully the same one I want. I want to see. Yeah. Uh, Hayley Hayley and Huckabee Sanders Yeah Yeah Nikki Hayley Huckabee Hayley And yeah. Sarah Huckabee Sanders Or Hayley or, DeSantis Or Yeah some, Something like that That'd just be awesome And then Eight years after that uh, Shapiro Owens Shapiro <laughs> there, Yeah th That's not going to happen But that would be something to see yeah, Shapiro Owens, and well, then even Owens Shapiro. Owen, Owen Shapiro, Owen Shapiro. Yeah, very, way. yeah, very happy. That would just be an absolute. But I don't think Trump ticket. DeSantis. I'd, I'd like to see Haley and Huckabee. Hey, or... Look, you know, I, I think Joe Biden. You know, I How don't even know that? why. Can you imagine them losing? But I can you imagine know, I don't even know Nikki why. Haley and Huckabee Sanders losing? What an indictment on society that would be. Well, you know, I think the, the only good job Biden's done at this stage is show the world what a great President Trump was. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very Thanks much everyone. for listening. Thanks, everyone. We are going to leave you all now with uh, Dwayne from Itel Radio 84. Um, Rabbi, good Shabbos to you. Good Shabbos to uh, We'll see you in the library at 8 a.m. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah, the rest of you, enjoy your week. My name is David Schulberg. We do jazz with Get From Thursday to Soul Time. And if you want to change from the usual... Jazz. Yeah. Yeah.